This is it. This is the one I've been waiting for. The episode opens outside a hot new club in New York known as Dancetron. A group of breakdancing street toughs who clearly could never get past that mighty velvet rope convince themselves that dancing on the sidewalk on a piece of cardboard is much better than hanging out in some stupid club. No, they're not having a seizure. That's how people danced in the 80s. Dancetron doesn't appreciate this sort of rabble-rousing outside their club and sends about 200 guys out to chase them away. Disproportionate responses were also a big thing in the 80s. As they're running away, one of the would-be dancers mentions that he wishes his boom blaster was the real blaster. You know, of the Autobots. Hey, wait, we know this guy. It's Raul from the episode Make Tracks. <laughs> his friends are really tired of hearing him lie about how he's very best friends with the Autobots, so it's convenient for Raul that their escape dumpster just happens to roll by his old friend, Trax. He and Blaster rush into the rescue, and when it's all over, Raul is all, I can take care of myself, and the cycle of romantically tense bickering continues anew. This here's my friend, Trax. You can hear the quotation marks in his voice. His friend, Trax. How much more obvious could this be, people? So the Autobots compare notes with Raul and his gang and decide that since there was a businessman among the Dancitron guys, there must be some kind of weird mystery afoot. Not just a guy who likes to dress nice, a proper mystery demanding the attention of two Autobots. Uh-huh. So Trax and Blaster make their way into the club. This is the man. I gotta get me one of those suits. Mellow kind of place. My kind of place. <laughs> Sound system. Hey, what's happening? Wanna dance? Blaster. Hey, he's off my man. How about it, shiny one? No, thanks. That's right. Blaster goes off with the ladies, and Trax has no interest. I mean, listen to the contempt in his voice. No, thanks. This is the cornerstone of my Trax is gay argument, and I think from this point forward, I no longer need to defend this assertion. If that music sounds familiar, it's probably because you've heard it before. It's been used on Transformers a couple of other times, but it originated, as far as I know, in an episode of G.I. Joe. This is an instrumental version of the song Cold Slither from the Joe episode of the same name. That's the episode where Cobra runs out of money, so their headquarters gets repossessed. Then they make a heavy metal video to recoup their losses. I promise I'm not making a word of that up. And you know what's an even better plot than that one? This one. See, it turns out Dancitron is part of a Decepticon plot. Starscream and Soundwave are using those rockin' rhythms to hypnotize humans into doing their bidding. No more clumsy hypno chips. We've evolved into stylish hypno nightclubs now. Yay! For some reason, Starscream decides that those three meddling kids need to be taken care of. So he exercises his hypnotic control over the conductor of the subway train they're on and orders him to kill them. And whatever humans might also be in the way. This is why I love Starscream. He's the perfect combination of needlessly destructive and incredibly petty. Fortunately, I guess, Blaster and Trax have now left the club and happen to be walking by the suicide train. I guess they didn't count on a flying Corvette with a grappling hook being in the neighborhood. So after the excitement dies down... And take these two with you. Raul, you and I are going to check that club out again. Thoroughly this time. Yo, how come he gets to go out clubbing with the sly car? Hey... Some guys got the juice, and some ain't. Ahem. So, off they go, juice and all. They happen upon a construction site populated by the same strange mix of people that were inside Dancitron, and Trax gets pelted with hot rivets. Meanwhile, Raul's other two friends, having received the bum's rush from the Autobots, are approached with two free passes to Dancitron. Way to stay in the story, guys. Good work. Well, I say story. We take a leisurely break for a little dancing. Damn it, we recorded several minutes of this song and you're going to hear the whole thing. Fine with me. Gold Slither, you'll be joining us soon. Trax makes his way back to the club and discovers Starscream and Soundwave's plot. They turn all the humans against him and suddenly Trax finds himself where we, we all wish we were in the 80s, right in the middle of the video for Thriller. Fortunately, Blaster and Raul show up and save the day. Raul discovers how to break the hypnotic spell by splashing filthy mop water on his face. This happened to me in a Waffle House in South Carolina once, but all it did for me was make me smell like dirty mop. I'm glad there's an actual practical use for the stuff, too. 
As if a hypnotic nightclub and the triumphant return of the beloved Raul weren't enough, this episode also features something we've been waiting for all season long, a showdown between Blaster and Soundwave. I may not have appreciated this other stuff when I was a kid, but I was all about this mess, and in all seriousness, it does not disappoint. Oh, the final verdict? Soundwave is stronger, unquestionably. Blaster only wins by cheating, by grabbing some handy speakers and amplifying his signal, but one-on-one, -on -one, it's pretty obvious that Soundwave can kick Blaster's ass, which pleases me. So, what were the Decepticons building? Does it matter? Seriously, if you need a justification for a hypnotic nightclub, you're just watching the wrong show. And now it's time for this week's science lesson. Trax has a weapon that could melt these guys' laser guns, but doesn't actually harm the guys themselves in any way. While the Autobots don't have a huge version of this weapon for when Megatron decides to take human hostages, no man can say. There were seriously about seven different lines competing for quote of the episode here. And this is pretty much the only episode in the entire series that openly acknowledges pop culture and makes a ton of references. This was a really hard choice to make. So please don't write to me and say, why didn't you use this one? I just picked one, okay? So shut up. Hey, where'd you get those threads? Soho? Cybertron. Hey, hey, what's the address? 